Oh, hello everybody. I've been uh, fielding some questions about the uh, some of the equipment that I've made and materials and so on. So I thought I'd do a video um, on some of the materials. Uh, one of the things that's an important material for me is this moldable ceramic fiber and pumpable ceramic fiber. Some people call it uh, ceramic fiber caulk or mastic um, if it's the pumpable variety. Um, but they're aluminosilicates and uh, I've used them to make these uh, uh, reusable uh, pouring cups. And uh, the materials really have some great properties um, on them. They're completely non-wetted uh, by aluminum and I think probably all non-ferrous uh, alloys, which means you can pour aluminum in them and then you can peel the aluminum right off of them and reuse them. The cups that I've made have draft and after I empty the cup out, which I'll talk about a little bit, a little bit um, there's just a thin skin of foil left in there and you can pull that out with a pair of needle nose pliers on that. It's very, very um, high insulating material and it is very, very resistant to thermal shock. Um, you, can, you can pour aluminum on it. You can, you can take it out of a hot oven um, and it's just it's not going to crack. Um, it's very resilient in, in that respect. But um, <clears throat> it makes an excellent material for um, this reusable pouring cup. And I've got several sizes of them here. Um, the smaller one I've actually got two of. I, I made a spare. Um, I've got somewhere between a 50 and 100 pours on it. Um, I stopped counting and I can't remember which one I used how many times, but I've used them a lot um, repeatedly. Um, one other thing about the material is it tenaciously bonds to itself. So if you damage one or you crack one, you can just dig out the crack and, and, and uh, pack it full um, of the material and fire it uh, again and it's good as new. And the other thing about the material is you don't have to dry it out. You can fire it wet. So if you if you want to pat something, you can put it in there. And I fire them at uh, 1800 degrees because that's what I've got my resistive electric furnace uh, set to. There's nothing magic about that temperature. The, the material is supposed to have a service temperature up to 2300 degrees Fahrenheit on that. And it's it's popular for use in the foundry industry for troughs, uh, sealing gaskets, and, and crack repair on that. So these uh, two here uh, on the right were made by making a, a styrofoam plug. And I used, you can see there's two different buckets back here. There's two versions. I mean, Inzwal is just a brand, but um, they have a, what they call a moldable uh, ceramic fiber caulking putty, and they've got pumpable. And the difference between the two um, is their viscosity. So I've got a couple little samples of it here for you. This on the left is the moldable, and I can pick that up, and it's about the consistency of cookie dough. And you know, you probably want to put latex gloves on, but you can you could mold it like a snowball. You could probably roll it out flat. And I use this material um, on the plugs. But before I, I get to that. Um, this is the pumpable material uh, here, and the pumpable material is uh, much lower viscosity than the moldable material. And you can see it'll run um, just maybe enough to hold up on this putty knife or, or not. You see, it'll, it'll hang up on it, but if I had a bigger piece of uh, it on, on the putty knife than that, it'd run right off of there. And it's, it's probably about the consistency of, uh, of pudding, of... of uh, of uh, um, uh, a kind of a runny uh, pudding on that, but it's um, they're both pretty useful, and you can mix the two if you want. You know, uh, viscosity somewhere between the two. If the if the cookie dough is a little too solid for what you're doing, you can put a little moldable in there, and you can kind of customize the viscosity um, to whatever you want on that. But um, I use the uh, the moldable kind, the more viscous kind, and. Uh, and, and uh, hand packed it around these styrofoam plugs that I cut out of um, expanded or uh, uh, extruded polystyrene and I just used uh, carnauba wax as a release agent but um, I packed it around there and of course um, I had to let it air dry for several days um, and it will, it will air dry um, because you can't fire it with the plug being polystyrene on that but after it was air dried for several days I was able to extract the plug and I got uh, this uh, pouring cup here and 
So you can pour whatever, you know, whatever style of pouring cup you want. You can see what the shape of this one is. And down at the bottom, there's a weir down in the bottom of there, which is a little uh, dam. Um, you can read up on your pouring cup designs. And the way this one is made, it's designed to uh, fit a one inch uh, styrofoam uh, sprue. So, uh, and the other, the other part that you need in order to use it is what I call the lifting cradle, which is just a piece of sheet metal. And that's because when you get the molten aluminum in there, um, it's reasonably um, strong material, but you wouldn't want to pick it up with a pair of pliers when it had a pound or two of aluminum in there. It just caused so much damage. So I just grab this piece of sheet metal that it's sitting on, pick it out of the sand while, um, right after the pour while the, mil the metal's still molten, and then dump it over on its top, you know, like this. And then after it cools off, I can just extract the... Uh, the foil that's left in there with a pair of needle nose pliers. So this one sitting next to it here um, was made the same way, different shape, um, you know, on the on the pouring well, uh, more square. Uh, but it also has a weir um, in it at the bottom. You can see this dam at the bottom, and it's a little bigger for bigger volume pours. You can see down in there how it looks, and it was just designed to take a uh, one and a quarter inch square sprue. Uh, that. And you just uh, fill the sand flask up um, to the top of where it's even with your sprue, and then you set the uh, pouring cup right on top of the sprue, and then continue and you fill the sand the rest of the way up to, you know, maybe a half an inch or so from the top, because if you didn't do that, you'd get a run out down here at the bottom from just that one inch of hydrostatic pressure. But if you fill the rest of it up with sand, it, you can just pour right on top of the uh, sprue with this cup there. And it works really, really well. It's a, it gives you a nice controlled pour, um, and I, it, I really do think that it gave me um, much better results in my castings and much more repeatability. And then the last one um, here is the extra large economy size that you can see. Now, um, I actually made this one um, in a different way. This is all made out of a half inch thick uh, ceramic uh, fiber board, which is solid. You know, you can buy it in sheets. I bought a two foot by four foot sheet, but on eBay and Amazon, you can buy smaller pieces and it's reasonably inexpensive. I mean, you could buy um, a sheet of it um, there that's like 12 by 18, probably for 15 or 20 bucks, and maybe even be able to have enough to make two of the smaller cups, um, hard to say on that. But you can cut this stuff like butter with a razor knife here, um, just to show you is, is that there's absolutely you know, nothing to it. You can just a little bit of sawing and you want to do use a little bit of a, a slicing action on it, but you can see that uh, it cuts readily um, with a razor knife. And to tune it up, you can just use um, a sanding block um, with a coarse grid if you want to put a little draft or, or angle on it. Um, you probably do <clears throat> want to take some care. Um, it's the same type of ceramic fiber that's on wool. It, it's very friable. And it can become airborne easily, but uh, I just do the work on a tabletop. And after I'm done on the tabletop, I take a piece of wood, scrape up all the fines, and uh, I don't vacuum or or whisk them um, away. And if you want to, you know, you can wear a mask while you're doing it too, if you're concerned about that. But I cut out pieces of half-inch fiberboard um, to make this one, and glued them together with the uh, pumpable ceramic fi uh, fiber. The uh, the lower viscosity material, and all you can kind of see here, you can see the witness line here where I, I glued each end. So there's four pieces around um, the sides, and there's one piece here in the bottom, and it's all glued in using that moldable ceramic fiber. After I glued them together, I set a little weight on top of them and let them um, air dry overnight. And then these pieces here are just um, two half inch pieces that I cut. Um, to form this shape and laminated them together. And then inside, um, all I did is in, in all the joints, I just uh, wiped in a fillet with my finger. So everything in there has got a nice round fillet, so it should release easily on that. And uh, this one is made to receive a one and a half inch square uh, sprue. And I'm going to do a large pour with it, and I haven't made the steel cradle for it yet. But the cradle will probably surround it and have a little hinged handle on it that I can pull it out of the sand with. Because this one, um, just this area of the cup will hold about five and a half pounds of aluminum and about another 1.2 pounds uh, 
in the sprue area. So if the cup were full, there'd be over six pounds, six, six pounds of aluminum, uh, molten aluminum in there. And I made this one for a 40 pound uh, pour I'm going to be doing in, in the future. But um, it, it is um, a different construction technique that I think that anybody could do. Um, the only caveats uh, I would say about uh, special equipment is, is you'd have to buy some of the pumpable ceramic fiber. You can do that. It comes available on eBay, and it is available at different suppliers that you can buy on the Internet um, by the tube. You can buy it um, in the form of like a tube of caulk, and that would you know, easily be enough um, to do this project. You could do several of these with, with a tube of caulk. It doesn't uh, take much of it on that. But then the other thing is, is you have to be able to fire it. And since I have a resisted furnace, or basically a kiln, I can fire it to whatever temperature I want. It doesn't take a controlled ramp. I just fire them um, up to 1,800 degrees, and I suppose you know you could do it with a gas-fired furnace. You know if you if you were careful, I wouldn't directly impinge on it with flame. But if you stuck it inside a can or something like that, and you were careful, you know maybe you didn't give a, your furnace uh, your melting furnace full bore, you could cure them um, in your furnace, and you could build these um, reusable pouring cups. And they're they're really slick. But I'll tell you what, having used them, I've used Kush cups. You know steel cylinders, um, foil, I mean, you name it, these things are hands down winners. I mean, they give you all the benefits um, of a pouring cup with a weir as far as uh, separating out um, dross and so on. They're easy to hit and they're just, they're great to be able to reuse. So anyway, that's kind of the story um, on these and uh, I like this material so much I, I built a whole furnace out of it. My whole furnace uh, hot base and my resistive electric is this stuff because uh, it was um, easy for me to mold coil shelves into it for the resistive electric coils. It's super um, low thermal mass and super insulating so it's, uh, it makes for a very high performance uh, um, uh, resistive electric uh, furnace on that. So um, Inswell is just a brand. There's lots of manufacturers of multiple ceramic fiber and pumpable ceramic caulk. Um, you search online, if I get the opportunity, I'll put some links in there for everybody, for some of the different suppliers. But it's pretty common industry material um, out there. And I th think for, for me, I'd always have a gallon of it on hand to do repairs and little jobs for the high temperature work with. So anyway, those are my reusable pouring cups. Um, hope that was helpful to you all. And uh, maybe in the not too distant future here, we'll have another discussion about uh, lost foam um, uh, refractory coating material. Thanks for watching everybody. Take care.